let's delve into the local market news on the day. Ian Crookshank's independent financial analyst joining me at the desk. Ian, thank you so much for your time. Hello, Samantha. Let's just talk about uh, what's taking place at Amplatz now yes. because it's had an impact on the currency. It certainly had an impact on the platinum, uh, on the uh, Anglo-American platinum price, I mean, down 5% as it stands right now. Um, but what, what is the signal to you about South Africa, the mining sector, uh, I suppose, worrying? What is most worrying of all, of how it can impact foreign direct investment, that's new investment, or even the foreign portfolio flows. I think uh, the global uh, investment managers, those who are, asset, uh, who are managing assets spread over the world are going to say, yes, we have to be in emerging markets. We don't have to be in South Africa. And with these sort of risks, it impacts directly their share holdings or even their bond holdings here. And I think it's going to be a problem for us coping with the huge twin deficits that we have. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is something that uh, currency traders continue to highlight Absolutely. as the uh, biggest yes. risk to the rand. Anglo-American uh, giving up all of its gains from Friday. And of course, we know the results were released on Friday. In fact, slightly better than the market had thought, still yes. swinging to uh, a loss there. Um, what, do you do, what is your view on getting exposure to Anglos at around 275 Rand? Well, it's been in a bit of a range, and, and it, seems, it seems to keep on dropping back to the lower end. And just at the moment, I would rather wait for it to settle. And I think if this strike is going to be ongoing, or strife, let's say, ongoing, then I, I would fear for the price coming under more pressure, and it's just not going to make that break up that mm -hmm. we were looking for. So no, it may be a good uh, investment in the longer term, but in the meantime, we could see it pull back further. And bulletins, what are you looking out for in the numbers tomorrow? I mean, the stock has uh, been, of course, a much better performer than the likes of Anglo's, and it's 304 as it stands today. Well, uh, I think it's, it's better structured than Anglo, a major competitor. Um, it has a, a, a better stake in the energy industry, particularly in oil. Iron ore and coal both picking up because they're so close to their major markets, their supply points in Australia. And I think we're going to see uh, a huge uh, concentration on cutting costs, taking costs out of the supply line. I think they're able to do that quite considerably. They're talking of managing something like $4 billion out of their cost side. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And that can really put them at the front of that diversified resources sector. I think it's looking very interesting. And if one's going to be a buyer in the sector, that should be top of the shopping list. Even at the level it's at now? Even now, yes. Yep. You know, back the winners. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's it. What about a smaller piece of news from the media space today, independent yes. news and media selling their stake in the, the South African unit? Mm. Um, two billion rand is, is the price. Uh, mm. The divestment there, do you see it as something to do with South Africa? Do you see it as something to do with what's taking place in the local economy and needing some cash? Uh, how do you read that story? Can I say yes and yes? Mm -hmm. First of all, something to do with South Africa. Well, Tony O'Reilly said for, for, for ages that uh, this the South African arm had done so very, very well indeed. And he mentioned a couple of the, of the titles here. And uh, so I think that what they found that is back on home ground, uh, they're having cash flow problems, as is the, uh, the, uh, the difficulty in all developed markets in newsprint. And I think that this is now meaning they've got to have a cash injection and this is where they're going to get it from. So really, uh, short term, it gives them a boost. Longer term, it takes away from the attractions of the group. Mm -hmm. And if we had to turn our attention to, to the telecom space, uh, interesting, small company, yes, they are reporting their results this week, so certainly topical, but uh, Blue Label going to the United mm. States to, uh, to launch an ADR there. Uh, and interesting at this time, um, why they want exposure in that market, uh, perhaps also you know, a market that is a lot more uh, tech savvy, some might That's say, right. uh, certainly uh, more developed when it comes to the technolo technological space. Um, but what are your thoughts on Blue Label and that decision? Well, they are, from a tech point of view, they really are at the cutting edge of, of the industry. And it'll be interesting to see whether they can uh, take on the Americans on home ground. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been done before, but uh, it's always possible. I think as long as they limit the amount of capital commitment that they're going to do, that's fine. And you know, this isn't a big n new industry that they're starting. It's simply looking for uh, an outlet for their own stock. What and I think that's, that's good. It, it's, good uh, it's a good move from their own point of view. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is interesting about the ADR is it's not yes. dilutionary. No. Um, and no. ultimately, I suppose, just exposure for the, com uh, for the yes. company and many gold companies in South Africa listed here say yes. uh, the gold investor, there's a lot more appetite for gold stocks in the States. That's why they go there. So perhaps uh, they see a different type of investor who'd understand their company from a different perspective. 
Yes, and if they do want to take the move to, to move operations into the United States or wherever else they go, uh, capital raising could mm -hmm. be that much easier. So a brave move, but I think a good one. There we go. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. today, Ian Crookshanks, independent financial analyst.